Hey guys, I'm going to show you a video about bassoon. Alright, this is the bassoon right here. I'm going to tell you guys about it. Uh, I've already finished doing a 20 minute video, which I cut abruptly because I think I can do this one better. So I'm going to show you guys a better version right now. So, let's talk about the bassoon. First things first, let's talk about what parts it has. Right here we have the double reed, right? Or just called the reed. And if you listen, it's going to have this nice tone to it. Isn't that beautiful? That's what's called a crow, and that's actually the sound you want to hear. You can also get a that kind of sound, which is okay as well. And it's good that you're getting sound out of it, but you don't necessarily want to hear that. Put this on the vocal, which is this metal thing right here, which is actually kind of hard to make because of how precise the shape needs to be. Um, and it, which is attached to what's, what's here, and I'll tell that name in a second. With some cork, you can see that right here, just like a wine bottle cork. And then you're going to remember this hole for later. See that hole? There you go. See it? It's like a pinhole. Tiniest, tiniest thing. And so the vocal attaches to the lead joint or the tenor joint, which then attaches to the boot. And the boot is kind of interesting because that's where one of the things that's special about the bassoon happens. See that rounding? The air comes all the way down through the wing joint or the tenor joint, goes around the boot, comes back up into the long joint and into the bell. Right? That part's called the long joint and that part is called the bell. Now, let's talk about how the bassoon makes sound. The bassoon makes sound like most other woodwind instruments, like all other woodwind instruments, where the, the pitch of the sound, right, is dependent on the amount of space the sound has to travel, right? The sound has to resonate in. So for example, you can actually, I'm already going back to that, that's a pretty high sound because all, it, all the space has to resonate to is pretty much just my mouth, you know? It, it can get around to my, to my chest and that, but it's not really doing much there, it's mostly just resonating a little bit, but it's not really moving around there. It's a very high sound, which is also caused by the reed itself, because if you listen to an oboist, just play their reed alone, it's going to be a much higher sound, because it's a much smaller reed, right? So, we have this reed right here, and if I just played on the vocal, you can see it's already going to lower this pitch just a little bit. There's the pitch being lowered already. Now, if I play it with no hands, instead of holding it up, that is our F. Now, that is one of the central parts of, a, uh, of pretty much anybody learning bassoon, you're going to learn your F first because it requires no keys, right? So, let's talk about the bassoon from the bottom up, right? So, we already got to our F. So, then, what happens if we put down every single hole we can that makes sense, right? Now, I'll get to why that makes sense later, but we're putting down what we call, and here's how we name the keys, right? One, two, three, right? Because it's using, we call these fingers one, two, and three, which are pointer finger, middle finger, and ring finger. All right? One, two, three on the right hand. One, two, three on the left hand, right? Now, it's holes one and two and three. Holes one and two, but then the third finger actually goes on this, which is called the G key, right? Now, G is a special note, and we'll talk about that later, but it, it has some pretty, pretty interesting roles. Now, after we get to this G key, let me go down to the F key, which is right here. This one right here. So if we hold G, let's see one, two, and three. There's three, four. No, nah, we don't call it four. That's the F key. And then we press this, which is called the pancake key, also called the E key. We get this to get lower. So I'll show you going down from F. Right? And those are all just regular non flat notes, right? These are simple notes you're going to hear in a C major scale. There's no sharps or flats. I'm not going to explain sharps and flats. If you guys don't know that, um, look them up. I trust you. Um, so then we get to the F and then the E, and then we go down all the way. So the E is right here, and then the next key that we need to press down is called the D. D here, right here, you can see this? This little long one. And then the C, and then B. And then we're going to use the only key that's not going to be, the only note that's not going to be a regular non-flat note, and a C major scale, obviously. Um, it's called the B flat key, and that's why we play our lowest note, which is, as you guessed it, the B flat. And my reeds up getting a bit dry. So I'm going to do something we have to do at the beginning of every time we play. Take our reed, put it in some water. You can do that for anywhere. Maximum of 10 minutes, because past that point, you're going to start to waterlog it. So I recommend taking it out of the water by then. Minimum 30 
30 seconds. Uh, but I, I'd like to get in there for like a minute or so. It like gets nice and saturated, but while also not being waterlogged, right? If you do it for five minutes, you're going to get maybe an improvement. Maybe it'll get worse. It's, gonna, it's definitely going to start to do some stuff to the wood. The 10 minutes is like an outer boundary that if you do that, you're putting some damage to your reading. So, got my read back on. It's wet. My throat's fine. Let me talk for a while now. Um, Let's play that B flat again. Now, if I turn around, look at this key right here. I shouldn't be playing out of the corner of my mouth, but you can see it moving up and down. This is one of the longest keys in the bassoon, it's B flat key, so it goes all the way up to the bell, which is only used for that key. Remember, I was saying how it's just the distance and the space that it needs to travel? If I take this off, it's a little bit sharper, right? And sharper means it's a little bit higher in pitch, right? Because the sound will still be escaping out of here, right? While also escaping out of different parts of the bassoon, right? How do I say this? Even though the B key, right, is right here, this is where the B pad closes. These are called pads. So you would think, okay, so it, it closed all the way. It doesn't really matter. The sound is actually coming out of this pad up here, right? Which just fell off. <laughs> um, which is which can happen. And what I'm going to do right now is put it back on. It's a very careful operation. Now, this is a student courtesy of Westchester University, which is the college I'm currently attending. I have to scare it back on, and in the future it falls off, then it falls off. It can, it can put it back on very easily. And it still seals very well. At least I hope it does. So, let's go up, right? We got our B, or B flat, right? Where pretty much all the sound is coming out of the top. And we got our B. My tongue was terrible. Here, how we're going up. Now, you, you heard there's probably more notes than I counted up to, right? Well, that's because of going in between, right? C, between C and D, you got C sharp. Between B and C, you got nothing. It's terrible. Um, because that's how our 12 tone scale works, which I'm not going to get into. Also, look it up if, you feel, if you're really curious. You probably know about that already. By the way, this video is made for Will Johnson. It's for you, Will. Hope you enjoy it. Um, but if you're not Will Johnson, feel free to watch it as well. I don't mind. You're the best, you know? Uh, so we got our C key right here. So B flat, B, C, and then after that, we're gonna go to this key right here. Right, this is beneath this key that we're gonna use a lot more. That's our C sharp. And then to D. I'm, I swear I'm gonna get this faster because I do not wanna go through every note for the most part. And then our D key. And then our E flat, which is just still holding on to that D key, but then pressing this top one as opposed to this one we did for the C sharp. There you go, there's for the E flat or D sharp. And then E, just taking our taking that D key off, this one, and then taking off that pinky as well. Just holding down that pinky key or E key. And then all the keys we were talking about with one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then the F key, not four, five, six. Um, and then F sharp is holding down your F key, taking your finger off the uh, E key. Because remember how we're going like, okay, so like C, C sharp, all right, so C sharp, that is one. All right, so you put a key down to make C sharp. That makes, okay, I guess that kind of makes sense, right? Not exactly, but may, maybe you just, maybe that's how the sound works. But then, see, this is what's great about this one. It's never consistent. For E, you think, okay, E sharp, which is also just called F. Uh, no, that's not how it works. Uh, <laughs> sorry, F, right? You think, okay, you put, put, another, put another key down. <laughs> So you're going to get a lot of things where you're, I realize I messed that part up. It does work, actually. That part is consistent, surprisingly. Um, e sharp is F. That's one, two, three, one, two, three. And then that pinky key, that F key right here. And then F sharp is putting a thumb down. Then G, right? Is just one, two, three, one, two, three. We were talking about that earlier. And then G, G sharp or A flat, holding this pinky down right here. Right? Just hitting this key. And the F sharp that I mentioned earlier, it actually has one alternate finger in it. If you press this key down here, it does the same note. 
listen. And see my pinkies coming down? Thumb's completely fine. Doing its own thing. And then the G has the same thing where if you press G sharp. Right? There's also a key on the thumb back here. Does the same thing. And then we get to A, which is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Really simple, you know? Then B flat, right, or A sharp, pressing down what we call the B flat key, because that how many times you use for B flat. And that's just the name of the people gave it. And then B, which is just 1, 2, 3, and then 1. C, that's 1, 2, 3. And then we get to C sharp. Now C sharp is interesting, because it's one of the first ones that, the first ones that get really, gets really wonky, right? We use our regular finger for C, right, 1, 2, 3. Then, while still holding down the whisper key, which is what we've been doing ever since F, right, ever since we've done here at this F, which is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and the F key, right? So we hold all that down, and then we also, if you can see, we move our thumb up to this, which is called the C sharp key, because it's played for, used for C sharp, and then this long one called the D key, which we already talked about, right? I personally like to hold down my pinky key as well, right? Because if you listen, it's still the same note, but it just changes the way it sounds a little bit. I prefer how it sounds with that pancake key. That's without. That's with. I heard a bit of in there. Then we go up to our D, back to normal, one and two. And then, oh boy, you know where we're at right now? We're at D sharp, or E flat. Now this one's a special one, because this is one of our first four fingerings. There's not that many four fingers, but just the fact that they exist in the first place is kind of concerning. Um, not really concerning, but just kind of annoying. So, with your E-flat, now the E-flat that people learn, I just scratched my nose with my read, uh, that my beginners learn is just holding down fingers one and three. That's kind of like a recorder, you know? You, you've seen the recorders. Um, and that it gets you from your D. It doesn't sound good, though. So what we do instead, as well, not instead, is, well, I'll slow down in the whisper key the whole time. We hold down one on the right hand, and then that B flat key I was talking about earlier. I did not want to let this rest on that anymore. Um, and then E, we're back to normal with this one. And then we're back up to F. And you heard me doing vibrato this whole entire time, which is that ba, which is a thing I should not do. I'm playing regular, just single notes for you, but uh, screw it, I'm doing it anyway. Because I like to. Now we get up to something called half holes, which are one of these quirks about bassoons, just like that four fingering, that you're not going to really see much, except for surprisingly on recorder. Just like four fingering, you're going to, it's one of those things that you really don't hear much else. So I guess bassoons are recorders. Confirm. I'm going to use, there's only three notes, right, in a line. There's only three notes, not total, but in, in a row that you use this thing called the half hole, which, if you look at my F, and then we put all our fingers back down again. One, two, three, and then one, two, three, which is just the G, key, which is just G. But instead, this time, we'd go half, right? You can hear the difference between those, and you can see my finger. Those are just this one between G and G. Now, just like the G before, just like the lower range, right? Actually, 
did the sound different. And there's a bit of like a, what sounds good? Ooh, kind of sound to it. Uh, it's, it's a little bit, it's a, it's a different sound quality, you know? You can hear just the way it sounds differently. Um, and for the A, what we do is we flick this key right here, which we call the A flick key. Because you flick A with it. Right? I'm flicking this key right here, click. And now we're going to move up to our B flat. Right? Now B flat, same thing as before. But now, because it's more related to B than it is to A, in, in the way we, we think about it, right? Uh, not because of any music reason, but just because it's for bassoon. You're not going to flick the A key. By the way, this key here, this, uh, this is the only time you flick this key for A, right? For B, B flat, and C, you're going to use this key right here. You can see me flicking that, right? And then for D, actually, skip, skip over C sharp. Remember I was telling you that C sharp is weird? It's weird again up here, y'all. Remember, we're almost done. Um, well, not almost done. We've got a little bit to go. So this right here, this is our C sharp key, as I was saying earlier. And we actually use this key as well for the C sharp. Now, C, right, when I flipped it, it's the same as the lower C, right? Now, C sharp is nothing like the lower C or any notes that surround it or no notes that come later. You know, it's on its own. It's its own thing because it just wants to be different, I guess. So we hold one, two, three, right? One, two, three, so like a G. Right? And that's the C sharp I did. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, like G. Then we hold F, the F key down here, make that F, the B flat key, and then hold down our C sharp key. But we don't hold the whisper key or the D key this time. That's what's special about it, you know? Whereas with opposed to the lower C sharp, you can see me pushing down on the D and then the whisper key as well. C sharp? You can see it's different. So, now we're back to normal scene. Thankfully, it's going to be nice and easy. For a while, when we play the D, we flick this top key. And as, remember how I was saying nice and easy for a while? That was a lie. It does not get easy. It gets hard. Not hard, just annoying. Because we're now going to do a fourth finger again. Yay, it's back! One and three. And then one, two, three on the right hand to play our E. And then, uh, oh, whoops, I skipped over a note. D sharp, right? Now, D sharp's another special one. Just like C sharp, it's the only one of its kind. There's nothing else that's like it. So you hold one and two in the left hand, and two and three on the right hand. Very special in that regard. There's the, uh, there's the D sharp or E flat. Then we do the E, I was just saying. And then, say, remember how uh, C sharp and D sharp were special in the way that they were only alone? Uh, e and F are actually kind of related in that way. So for E, you hold one, two, three on the right hand. And then F is the same thing as E, but you hold one and two. There's no, uh, no in between those, because that's how 12 tone music works. And then after that, we get to another one that's just special on its own. It's F sharp. Oh, who loves F sharp? No one. Um, so then for F sharp, what we do is we hold two, right on the left hand. One and two on the right hand. And then our, and then our F key. But now we're going to introduce a special key. Right? This is the key that we used earlier for the E flat, if you remember. That low E flat. And this one's called a resonance key. Now it's called a resonance key because we use it to resonate, obviously. No, uh, we use that key right here. That top one, that resonance key. We're also a G way down there, only half hold. And then it's F up here, and then most no F sharp up here, sorry. And then most notes above it are going to use this key, the resonance key. Right? So you use two on the left hand, one and two, F on the right hand, and as well as not as well. So one and two on the right on the right hand, but the F key, no B flat key. I may, I may have said that that was wrong. And then we get those notes, right? We get that F sharp coming out, and then G, it's our half hole. He's back. Uh, where what was it? We don't know. But he's back, and that's it's great that he's here to stay. So we have half hole for the first finger, two and three on the left hand. That resonance key I was just talking about, and then one, and the F key on the right hand. And it's, oh, good old Apple, because he's back. Right? He's back again for the uh, G sharp or A, flat. G sharp or A flat. You're going to do the exact same thing, but this time instead of doing one and an F, you're going to do one, two, the G key, which would be three, one, two, three, and then the B flat key. No F time. No F this time. Oh, my throat's getting dry. Uh, sorry, 
two and three. I misspoke because sometimes it's hard to remember fingering, especially up here, it gets hard. So it's two and three, not one, two, and three. And then the B flat key on the right hand. Now, we loved seeing the half hole again. We gotta say goodbye to him again because he's a bastard and he cheated on his wife. Uh, so now it's gonna now we're gonna go to A, who did not cheat on his wife. Uh, so we can uh, we can see him for a while, you know. It's, it's gonna be great. So we see the C sharp right here. C sharp key and the A flat key, right? Let's come back in. Uh, funnily enough, for A. So what we do is one, two, three on the left hand, pinky, which is the resonance key, on the left hand. Yeah, sorry, one, two, three on the left hand. These two keys, that, that C sharp key and that A flip key, holding all this down, pinky as well, and then just three, just three up here. Right? And that's gonna get your A. Now to get B flat, you go, same thing on the left hand, but on the right hand, you're gonna do one and two. Make sure I get this one. Yeah, one and two, and then the F key, right? Which is actually almost similar, but not at all similar to G, the G flat we did earlier. We're not gonna talk about that. And that's your uh, B flat or E sharp. And then we're getting, to, we're getting to almost the end here of where I know. We're going to another weird fingering, because all these, by this point, because remember, D was the C was just one and two. It's kind of similar, you know, it's simple. But now we're getting up here. Throw right. Because <laughs> I've been talking a while. Uh, and now, now we're going to appear to, to ever, ever pass that D. Okay, I'll get to those in a second. But those are all different from what they were lower down, right? They're all, they're all just, they're doing their own thing, you know? Um, so, once we get past, and now we got to our B natural. Remember we did our B flat? Now we're at, now we're at B natural. Now for B natural, I get this one right. Because once we get into these higher ones, these are ones I have memorized just because they're they're they're, they're so they're so unique, I guess. And like I've learned them periodically over time that I don't remember them based on what they are, just on how like it's muscle memory, it's not actual memory, if that makes sense. So I'm holding down this B and C flip key, one and two on the left hand, not three. My pinky, that resonance key. One and two on the right hand, B flat and F, right? So it's almost like the B flat, but you put down the on the on the right hand, and the right hand at least, but you put down the B flat key. And then to see above that, you're going back to a pattern. Remember how the A and the B flat had a pattern? The left hand? So does so do the uh, B and C. So what I gotta do, flip up this first finger. It's super easy. There we go, got those two keys now. Now, oh my god, it's C-sharp, y'all. C-sharp is its own thing. I mean, I was saying about earlier, remember how each C-sharp was different? This one's different, too, right? We're gonna hold, we're gonna hold down, this is only, you only do this for the C-sharp, and no other note ever on the bassoon, right? Where you hold down both of these, the top D and the uh, top D flip key and the, and, the, and the B and C flip key, hold these down, Fork finger the left hand like we did for our E flat and our uh, E and the F, right? Right. So that now we're do now we're doing those. Hold the resonance key down like we've done for pretty much all of these, and then fork finger the right hand as well. That's pretty interesting, you know. That's how you get your C sharp out. It's not the best note. I I think all the C sharps the very they stick out a lot except for like the lowest one. Those all th those sound pretty. That C sharp sounds pretty nice. But then this one, those, those D and then C, and then we go to C sharp. So you can see it kind of sticks out. Same thing with the C sharp above that. I mean, C sharp just the weird kid. Let's throw rocks in, you know. Um, so we get to the C sharp up here, which sounds only a little bit weird, but its fingering is weird. So we're still throwing rocks at this. Uh, not the bassoon, though, because that would be dumb. You know, it would hurt the bassoon. So now we got that. And now we're going to go to D, which is now so high that I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. Um, I'm just doing it based off of what I'm pretty sure is right. So we hold our D, D flick key down. This is the only time we've yet held down that D flick key. Sorry, i got to think about this. Then we hold three. We're almost the end, guys. We are almost the end of what I can play. Three on the left hand, resonance key. 
B flat key, G, which is the number three, and the A flat key. Let's see right here. And that's a D. And then to, and then we got a little bit new, a new system that we're going to continue on for just two more notes, which are D sharp and then E. And this is the first time we're using these keys right here. These are specifically for just those two notes, right? There's D. I'm holding my fingers out just so you guys can see, because this is actually bad to hold them out this far. That was me playing higher. Now those are all the notes I know. Yeah, I don't want to see if any water, but my throat is getting so dry. That'll be good enough for now. Uh, let's talk. Let's actually play something right now. You guys have seen all that. It's taken 26 minutes to get through all that. So I hope you guys will enjoy when I, when I play, actually play something. Uh, now, bassoon is great because it's got a lot of repertoire, which is music. Um, and we can do we can do fast stuff, right? Uh, so that's uh, one part of the Weber concerto, Weber bassoon concerto. Another part, though. wire stands because they're so hard to manage. Anyway, this is in the post Nella suite by Stravinsky. I'm not going to play this perfectly because I'm tired and my throat hurts. That's really fine. But here we Now, that actually 
actually repeats. So instead it would have gone, and it kind of goes back to where it started with the, right, that part right there, which is not the part I played earlier, which is the part I started right now. Um, but I decided not to repeat just for clarity's sake, not clarity, but to be concise, it was already going for half an hour, and to get that out. Um, and also because I'm feeling tired right now, because I'm going to talk for right now about 50 minutes. Uh, so um, that's pretty much the basic of the bassoon, you know? Um, we're actually in this portion of the suite. We can get a good slow section. Um, so this is right in, this is in the sixth movement. That previous thing was actually still in the sixth movement, but this is mu that was much later in the sixth movement. Um, this is early in the sixth movement. So you can tell how much variety you're going to have, and even just one movement of the suit. So. <laughs> especially. I hope you enjoyed. I hope my quality isn't too shit, because if it is, I don't know. I'm just, I don't want to put it on anyway. I put too much time into this. Um, and yeah, that's it. I'll give you all one last crow. You can hear actually that coming through there already, because that means the reed's getting dry, my mouth's getting tired, and it's getting dry. So you can still hear it coming through. Um, so yeah. That is the bassoon content that was requested. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any more questions on the bassoon, please feel free to uh, slide me a comment on it, and I'll put another half hour video. No. Uh, and I would love to show you guys more about the bassoon. If you guys want to know, you know? Or I'll probably just ask you, I'll probably just answer in the comments, because that seems easier. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, thank you. Bye.